Konnichiwa, my name's Andy. Welcome to Uzumaki Garage. In this episode, I'm putting the reconditioned gearbox back in the Integra Type R. In the last episode, I replaced the flywheel, clutch and rear main seal on the engine. This episode, I'll lift the transmission back on the engine and tighten it all up to the factory torque settings. First, I'm cleaning off the old grease from the clutch fork, or it might even be copper anti seize and unpacking the new throwout bearing. I'm using high temp wheel bearing grease as I can't get any of the Honda urea based grease recommended in the service manual. I put two dabs of grease on the ends of the clutch fork and a tiny amount on the throwout bearing where it'll come in contact with the fingers of the pressure plate. Then I add a little blob of grease on the back of the fork in the hollow for the clutch fork pivot point and another dab of grease in the hollow at the end of the fork where it contacts the slave cylinder rod. I'm cleaning the clutch pivot bolt and input shaft but as the transmission has just been reconditioned, the whole thing looks immaculate. And on the transmission splines, I'm adding some more of the pink grease that came with the Exceedy clutch plate kit. It's really important not to use too much grease because I don't want to risk it getting on the clutch plate surface. And now I'm installing the clutch fork boot. Now to add some high temp grease for the bearing to slide along. And finally, a dab of grease on the clutch fork pivot bolt. I slide the throwout bearing onto the clutch fork feed the fork through the hole in the transmission's casing and slide the bearing along the transmission's input shaft. Then press the fork down so it clicks onto the clutch fork pivot bolt. And now to lift the transmission onto the engine. A good mate of mine helped me do this as it's much easier with two people. We didn't have time to film it properly but this voiceover describes how we did it. The engine sump is resting on a block of wood on a trolley jack. I lower the engine down a bit so it's on a downward angle on the transmission side. Using a second trolley jack, I lift the transmission up, maneuver it around the cross member, and line it up at the same angle as the engine and the same height as the clutch. But that's not shown in this image as I didn't get a shot of the transmission in that position while I was balancing it on the transmission jack. We also rotate the transmission to line it up with the dowels that are still in the block. With it lined up at the right angle and height, we slide the transmission's input shaft straight through the clutch and into the flywheel bearing. But with both of us under the car, lifting and lining up the dowels, it wasn't actually that bad. And now it's on the engine and there's a couple of bolts finger tight holding it in. There's two blackish coloured bolts that go through from the engine side into the gearbox. And with a final little push, the gap between the gearbox and engine fully closes. And the upper three bolts go through holes in the gearbox and screw into the engine block. I loosely tighten all the five bolts in a crisscross pattern and then I fully tighten the two bolts on the engine side with the torque wrench. And then I torque down the rear transmission bolts. Now I'll install the transmission's upper mount. I lift the engine up a bit, sit the mount on the transmission and slip the nuts and bolts on loosely. Then I jack up the engine a bit to make sure the mount is in the right position onto the chassis bracket. Then I tighten the small bolt and two nuts into the transmission. I'm lifting the engine again to line up the transmission mount to the hole in the chassis bracket. Now I can slide the bolt in and tighten it up. Now I'll use a torque wrench to tighten the three upper transmission case bolts. I'm now fitting the transmission's front mounting bracket onto the chassis rail. Now I'm replacing the washer and nut and I'm using three bolts to attach the other part of it directly to the transmission. Forty-four. I'll put a bit of anti seize on these. With the weight of the engine on the transmission mount, I'm going to torque it up now to seventy-four newton meters. The next step is to replace the flywheel cover, but it needs a really good clean before I can do that. So first I'll give it a degrease. Now I'll use a brush to scrub it with terps, which is sometimes called white spirit. And now I degrease again, 
and rinse down with water, blow it dry and wipe down with brake cleaner. It's great to finally have the reconditioned gearbox back on the car. It seemed like a really big job to take on, but I did it slowly, step by step, while trying to make sense of the Honda PDF service manual. The Honda recommended greases weren't readily available, so if you're taking on this job yourself, it might be a good idea to find the specific Honda grease or equivalent. In the next episodes, I'll keep reassembling the car with drive shafts, starter motor, electrical sensors, brakes, exhaust, oil and coolant. There's still a lot of work to do and film and edit. But before you go, click that notify bell so you know when the next one's out. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.